It's a group of people uh, who have got together uh, who are interested in, in wildlife in Norfolk. And that can be anything from the seashore right into woodlands, over the fens, whatever. Uh, but they all have a common shared interest in, in wildlife. And we've been around now for 150 years. The Society has been studying natural history within the county uh, for that length of time. Uh, enthusiastic amateurs have got together and uh, shared their results and shared their interests um, and uh, taught each other about the wonderful plants and animals that occur in Norfolk. Um, so I joined the Norfolk and Norwich Natural Society because I thought it was really important to get involved with local recording efforts in Norfolk. There's a fantastic group of county recorders who are experts in their field and it's really important to draw from that knowledge when you're doing recording. Um, but as a member I'm able to access loads of different recording days out so you can go and do um, fungi forays, butterfly walks, all sorts of different activities on um, on different sites. I just thought it was really important to have access to those events as a member because I could draw from that knowledge and help me improve my recording skills. And then I've got a device here called a pooter, which is just a glass tube that's uh, got a tube going into it at one end. And then I can suck on this end and the flies go in there. So hat comes off. And jump into the net with the flies is the best way. So there's some of the flies we've caught. That's a male mosquito there, not one of the anopheles, that's a different sort. Anybody can be a member. Uh, but all members of the society receive each year a copy of the Bird and Mammal Report, the transactions of the society, which is a gathering of papers regarding other wildlife found in the county, and also Natterjack, which is a magazine that the society issues three to four times a year. Uh, my name is Pip Collier. Yeah, I'm a spider recorder for the county. Uh, I think it was because I found a spider in the garden that was quite colourful and I wanted to find out what it was and at that time there were no books. Uh, so I went to see Tony Owen at the, at the uh, museum and he said either get into it or forget it. So I went on a spider course at Flatford Mill and um, that was 30 odd years ago, 40 years ago I suppose. So I gradually got into it. These are clubanid spiders. These, yeah. I think they're also called sack spiders. But um, it's quite a few species. What's really great about biological recording is that you can still go out and enjoy nature and look at what you see, but actually what you're recording will make a huge impact on conservation for the future. So you're going out with a purpose, really, um, to conserve the sites that you love and enjoy, like county wildlife sites, local parks, and even your back garden. Um, it's kind of giving you a chance to record those areas and see how the wildlife is changing. If you imagine the natural world like a pyramid of bricks, and we're sat at the top of that pyramid of bricks. You start pulling out the bricks lower down and it's obvious what's going to happen. If we don't care for the environment that these um, organisms, these animals are living in, and we don't care for it and nurture it, then eventually those organisms and animals are going to go missing and die out. And you've only got to look at the scenario of the bees and so on. Uh, and uh, other pollinators. If, th if those go, then we're in real trouble. So actually monitoring these things is absolutely imperative. You may have heard recently about reports of how insect populations have been crashing, and this is certainly something we've noticed. Um, you know, at one time, driving a car through 
uh, a country lane at night, um, it would be like being in the middle of a snowstorm. There were so many moths about, it just doesn't happen anymore. Um, and there are reasons for this, and we're trying to understand what those reasons are. Is it just effective pesticides, or is it to do with climate change? We're, we're not absolutely sure, but we certainly feel that there are important issues there which need to be studied, and amateur naturalists can make a very important contribution to those studies. I'm a generalist, a generalist who's forgotten his camera, so I'm having to concentrate <laughs> on my memory and use my little book and I'm mainly interested in plants because that's the book I brought with me. Quite often I do fungi. Uh, botany really, although I'm not very expert compared to you know some of our members of our society, the, the real botanists who are incredible really. But that's the advantage of our society, well one of the advantages is that we actually attract the um, uh, the real experts, which there aren't all that many of anyway. I think now is a really exciting time for recording because so many, um, so many of the younger generation are getting involved in environmental activism and wanting to help with climate change. And the way that biological recording can be involved in that is by going to your local sites and monitoring what species are changing throughout the seasons and throughout the years. And that really goes a long way into helping people map what's going on with the different species and what's going on with the climate. So for me, really, it's my way of acting to help save against climate change. Uh, it, it's a mistake which people sometimes make in thinking that, um, that, that the plants and animals that you have in a county are fixed. Nothing could be further from the truth. Stuff comes and goes all the time. Uh, we get new species coming into the country, which very quickly spread through the country. Um, things such as the harlequin ladybird, for instance. Uh, which uh, not that long ago was unheard of in Britain and now it's probably one of the commonest ladybirds that we have throughout the county and it's got implications in terms of the damage it can do to our native ladybird populations. So th there's lots of things like that which uh, we can point to and say it's because those people 150 years ago were doing their research and recording their research um, that we can now use their results to compare how things are today. We had uh, certain numbers of books and, and collections from people that had uh, donated them in the past. Uh, we had quite a legacy given to us um, during the course of 2018-19, which uh, we decided to uh, spend and celebrate, or spend some of it and celebrate, with a, a research library. So the Norfolk Naturalists Research Library held at Wheat Fen here, um, which is a, um, a sort of joint venture, if you like, uh, by the Norfolk and Norwich Naturalist Society and the Ted Ellis Trust, is available for research for anyone that wants to come in and, and use the library. Norfolk is home to so many fantastic charismatic species really so you've got um, all of the fantastic moth species that we've got great gigantic um, hawk moth species that you can count we've got dragonflies hundreds of beetles that you can identify um, different bees and the great thing about Norfolk really is that there's a species that you can identify any time of year so fungi forays you can do during the autumn seaweed you can collect any time of year and identify it so really there, there are hundreds of species outside of the sort of charismatic butterflies and birds that um, are just waiting, screaming out for people to come and record them. Uh, there's water beetles, uh, which most of which are predatory, um, and water bugs. We, we, we really shouldn't undervalue the contribution that the amateurs, the small amateurs, make. And this is something which continues today, even though there's lots of research going on at universities and so on across uh, the, the country. Um, the, the amateurs who are working within small natural history societies can still make a major contribution to our understanding of the animals and plants that we have and the threats that they face. And what I'll do is I'll keep that alive, and there we go, and um, try to hatch out uh, the adult from it. Um, and then I'll have the larval skin, which I can look at. 
and have the pupil skin and then the adult itself and um, from that we should be able to get a positive identification on, on which particular uh, mosquito that is. The thing with knowledge is that it's only useful as long as it gets passed on. Um, so it's really important for new generations to get involved in recording, not only because it keeps the recording effort going, but actually because there are new species coming into Norfolk all the time um, and we need more recording effort to keep track of those. So, for example, the purple emperor butterflies recently come into Norfolk and we've got polecat sightings. And Norfolk is such a massive county, really, that any, any increase in membership would be fantastic for recording. And it's really important to keep that effort going and keep the kind of um, the motivation for recording going as well as climate change affects our species in the county.